Hey, this is Scott, and today we're going to take a look at the auto white balance with white priority feature of the Canon 5D Mark IV and see how it affects images compared to the standard auto white balance. When I first played around with it, it seemed like it might only affect the whites while not changing the other colors, but this doesn't really seem to be true, unfortunately. It does affect the image differently depending on how much white is in the image, though. So to show you how the auto white balance with white priority affected images compared to the standard auto white balance, I took a series of pictures under some different lighting with different subjects, with white in the picture, without white in the picture, and we're gonna look at how they came out uh, from the camera. I imported these into Capture One and I didn't make any other adjustments. So these are how they look straight out of the camera. First off, looking at an image that has a good amount of white in it, you'll see as I toggle back and forth that the white balance stays nearly the same. You can see in the image as well that it looks pretty much identical. And zooming into the area with white, it's pretty much the same. As well as the area without as much white, there's no noticeable change in these images. Going to another image with a large amount of white, again, you'll notice that the white balance hardly changes. And zooming in, they do look pretty much identical. One last picture, this was indoors under artificial lighting. And again, you'll see that the white balance is nearly identical. And zooming in, that's pretty much the case. There is not really a noticeable difference between either of these images. Uh, just a note, in all of these images, the Standard auto white balance is on the left side and the auto balance with auto white balance with white priority is on the right side. This is one more image that had a fair amount of white in it. And again, you'll see that the white balance is pretty much the same and the images look nearly identical. So taking a look at some images with much less white in the image, uh, you'll see even at this size, it's very noticeable that there is a difference. The image on the right with the white priority is noticeably cooler. And if you look at the Kelvin white balance and the tint also, as I go back and forth between these two images, you'll see that there is a difference. If we look at them one by one, it's even easier to notice. So this is with the standard auto white balance, and this is with the white priority. Again, standard and white priority standard white priority. It's possible that I could say this white priority white balance is more true to real life colors, but I do like the standard auto white balance better personally. It has a little bit of a warmer feel. This was a cold, uh, cloudy day, so this slightly cooler image is probably relatively accurate, but it doesn't have that kind of beautiful warmer tone to it. Here's one more image, and again, it's pretty much the same case. The Kelvin white balance does shift for the entire image. And again, going back and forth, you can see a pretty significant shift to cooler, a cooler overall white balance. Again, while the white priority white balance may be more accurate to real life colors, uh, I think that this may be a little bit warm depending on your taste but I think overall it looks nicer personally and one more and that was taken outdoors this is very noticeable especially in the tone of the wood but if you look at the socket it's also noticeably more white and again possibly more accurate to real life colors but I would definitely argue that the warmer image this one here taken with the standard auto white balance is a nicer effect than this one with the white priority auto white balance. Again, standard white balance and pr uh, white priority auto white balance. Uh, looking indoors at a photo with artificial light, from this distance it's not super noticeable, but if you look in the back uh, of the guitars with the wall, the white wall, you can see a pretty big shift. In this case, I would say that the wall on the right actually looks a little bit too blue, slightly too blue. 
But again, it's difficult to say if it's more accurate to the true colors or not. You might be able to notice it a little bit here as well. But uh, once more, let's take a look back to back. It's very noticeable when you look at it this way. And again, this is the standard auto white balance and the white priority auto white balance. Looking at them back to back, I think that the white priority ba auto white balance definitely looks too cool for my taste. I like the warmer tone of the standard auto white balance. Unfortunately, when there's people in the frame, this pattern continues. If you look at these two pictures, again, you'll notice that the picture on the right with the white priority auto white balance has a much cooler tone, both in the background and on the skin as well. And looking over at the white balance, you'll see it just shifts the overall image's white balance a few hundred degrees in the cooler, bluer direction. Looking at them back to back, you'll see that both the background and the skin and t-shirt shift on the uh, auto white balance with white priority. A bit too blue for uh, skin tone, in my opinion. So this was the standard auto white balance and the white priority auto white balance. Standard white priority. I think this is definitely a bit too much blue for skin tone. Just a couple more here. The same pattern continues. Look at them back to back very quickly. Standard auto white balance, white priority. Standard white priority. And just one last one here. We'll just look at these back to back. Standard white priority. Standard white priority. So as I've said a couple times already, I personally will prefer to use the standard auto white balance and I don't think I'll find myself in any situation where the auto white balance with white priority will be the better choice. It's not exactly a complaint since the standard auto white balance is very well behaved on Canons and I like the image that it gives you, but it's too bad that this isn't the magical improvement that I hoped it was. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below if you've had a different experience using this setting. If you found this video helpful, I'd love if you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to see more videos in the future. As always, thanks for watching.